Howdy y'all, is me. I'm back to give my little sort of review or discussion, I don't know, whatever you wanna call it, you can call it that, of the final shape. Right up front, we're gonna say there are no spoilers. I'm not gonna be getting really into the specifics of the story, but just more so the overall thoughts on the story. Straight out the gate, dude, I absolutely loved this story. I absolutely loved this expansion. It's not done by any means. The raid comes out in less than 12 hours and we will be getting our conclusion and the finale, the final campaign mission after it's completed. But for what story there is that is present here, it is probably the best writing, best storytelling visually and contextually that Bungie has ever put out with Destiny. Surpasses the Taken King, surpasses Forsaken, surpasses the Witch Queen. And those three, I adore. But there's something here that I just absolutely love it. And I think it's the tone. The tone here has elements of horror. It's a little scary sometimes. You're like, ooh, you know, oh shit. <laughs> I'm, getting, <laughs> I'm getting goose pimples all over me. That type of shit. Environments are creepy and beautiful, stunning at moments, and then just jaw-droppingly horrific. It's amazing. It's tense. It's emotional. Surprisingly emotional. Overall, it just felt like this beautiful bundle that was just flowing together so perfectly. There was never any big jumps between sets pieces. There was no moments throughout this where I was like, uh, what's going on? Everything felt cohesive. And that's something I highly, highly appreciate because with Lightfall, the most recent expansion previous to the final shape, there were so many moments throughout Lightfall where I was like, what the fuck is happening? But in the final shape, there was not a single moment where I was like, um, huh, scratching my head. What, what this, you know? And that is all thanks to the amazing voice cast here. Holy shit. Nathan Fillion playing Cade 6. So long Nolan North, you can be our you can be our ghost. Stay ours our ghost. Cade, that's Nathan Fillion, dude. Nolan did a pretty damn good job with Cade back in the day and whatnot, but there's something about Nathan Fillion that just hits different. It's this goofy sort of tone with this underlying melancholic presence, this underlying apathy, this confusion, this heartache, this stress. Nathan has this tone about him, the way he delivers these lines and this expansion mansion, you're like, hey, you're a pretty funny guy, but I know you're hurting. It's like, crying in the club type shit. And it's phenomenal. And uh, Keith David, let's talk about Keith David as Zavala. It was a little jarring at first. And there are some moments throughout it where I was like, ooh, that's a, the delivery there sounds a little off. I feel like it's just because we haven't been warmed up to Keith David's voice as Zavala just yet. And I know it's, it's never gonna be one-to-one -one with Lance Reddick, may you rest in peace, the legend. But for having to fill such gigantic, monumentous shoes, Keith David did a phenomenal job. He's got this bite to him. He's got this anger in his voice at moments where it's like, ooh, <laughs> buddy, you're making me feel uncomfortable. And that's another thing is there's moments throughout this story-wise and tonally that make you feel uncomfortable, man. And I was like, wow, there's never really been many moments in Destiny's history where I felt like uncomfortable being the third person in a two-person scene. The tension throughout this is thick with like five C's. It's crazy. Phenomenal job across the board in terms of voice acting. Akora has some fantastic moments. Mara, of course, shows up. And Crow, here's the thing. I've not really been the biggest fan of Crow all the way up until now. I always thought that Crow was like this, this, oh, I'm I'm timid, I'm timid, like pointing his fingers at the, at each other, like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, type shit. But I, this, this expansion has really brought me around to liking Crow. And I think that he's a very, very solid character. And his voice actor does a fantastic job at conveying the, the apologetic tone, but the acceptance, the, the coming to terms with things, realizing who he is and what he can be, what his destiny is. Crow, solid. Ikora, solid. Mara, solid and the witness dude who voices the witness i want to know i'm gonna have to look this up the witness is scary now the witness is a villain i know a couple months ago i was saying that like the witness oh not that scary not that crazy i prefer savathun over literally anybody in the series is a villain but no the witness is kind of fucking scary now the voice acting is <laughs> whoa when that motherfucker starts talking angry you can tell it is furious and it is 
maybe it's the voice modulation. Shout out to the audio team in that front, dude. It's a beautiful sounding expansion. And speaking of sounding expansion, the soundtrack, dude. Holy shit, Michael Salvatore and Ryan Seacrest. You guys are cooking. You're cooking, dude. Oh, bring them back if they're doing any more expansions, dude. Pre please, Bungie, bring them back. Dude, the soundtrack here is beautiful. It's orchestral with these like droning, creepy choir bits in the back. The thumping drums during these intense moments. There was like a traversal section throughout this pyramid ship looking area. I remember just like doing a little jumping bit and I was like, whoa, this is, I was like kind of like bobbing my head back and forth. I'm like, this got fire, dude. Like, here we go. And then when shit was getting intense, the, the music crescendos with it. I was like, oh man, they're cooking here. I was getting chills. I like, I turned down some of the audio except for the music and let that stand front and center for me. Cause I was like, this is beautiful. And speaking of like front and center in terms of audio digestion, I've noticed in like seasons or previous expansions, there's moments where I feel like the dialogue of characters, the storytelling bits are kind of sitting in the back of my mind while my mind is more so focused on the actions I'm doing. With the final shape, I felt like the storytelling and the character voices and the dialogue that was going on was was gripping I felt that was taking my primary focus because you don't want to miss it they build it up so phenomenally that you just do not want to miss what they're saying because it is it is explaining things that you've wanted explained it's emotional it's tonally strong it is that's what I can say if I were to like boil down the final shape into one word it is strong it is powerful it is stunning now let's see let's take a little bit of like a like a a rigid jump here to uh, prismatic prismatic here it's pretty damn good i noticed that the recharge time on it feels kind of slow i know it is dependent on whether you're using darkness based weapons and light based weapons but even though i was trying to find like the balance between like using a light super and a light dodge but then like my melee and grenade are dark and then having like a dark weapon is my primary and then a light weapon is my secondary trying to like have that perfect 50 50 no matter what i could do it never felt 50 50. there was times where it felt like how is the light side completely filled but i've been bombing enemies with strand and it's only like halfway uh that can be a little a little confusing at times and a little jarring when it's so big of a difference it feels like it like requires so much more on the dark side at moments but when you pop that transcendence man the the flow kicks into action but there are moments i feel like i'm kind of fighting against it maybe it's just because i don't have all the fragments and aspects unlocked yet so i can't really like fully build craft it just yet but with what i've got it feels like i'm kind of fighting against it sometimes it's strong it's potent but not game breakingly potent like i thought it was going to be it might be down the line now to follow along with the prismatic here unlocking the fragments they're tied to post campaign side quests and missions and that's something I want to focus on here too is post campaign content relating back to Lightfall I completed Lightfall's campaign I did some of the side quest stuff after it on Neo Muna and whatnot and did what I could to kind of build the world around me narratively and feel like I could get myself more immersed but it never really came to fruition the way that I thought it would and I was moving on to whatever season dropped with Lightfall's launch pretty quickly here with the final shape I've put a, a, a very solid amount of time time into it and I have not even thought about touching the seasonal content yet because I'm nowhere near done with the post campaign content because there's so much of it exploring the pale heart is a beautiful thing I find myself just sitting there looking at the skybox and looking at the landscape around me because it's just so beautifully designed it really draws you in you feel like you're immersed in this in this hellish world at moments and then thrown into bliss at other moments it's beautifully crafted but the actual activities are also very very engaging I've been spending most of my time just hunting down other fragments and aspects and abilities and finding the lost ghosts and whatnot to progress some of those side quests getting the exotics and all the special ammo swords are a crazy concept but in practice i feel like i can't find my niche with it i feel like i'm running out of ammo too quickly or uh enemies are dying before the actual like aspect can kick in i have the one that works kind of like a polaris lance or a uh, tiku's divination with the strike mark it and then explode it sort of thing i feel like enemies die before i can actually get it to explode or actually feel like i'm doing anything super strong i want to test it i want to test it on warlord's ruins first boss just to 
to see what kind of damage output we can do with a special sword. The exotics are fun as hell. I'm working on getting Kvostov here. People found out how to obtain the exotic version of it. So I'm going to be trying to do that here soon. The world events are super cool. There's bosses for specific areas that you can fight with different mechanics to them that are really, really engaging. The post campaign content is a plenty. There's really no shortage of it. As with Lightfall, I would have been moved on and already halfway, if not done with the first week of the seasonal content and then looking for other things to do with the final shape here. I'm still digging into the final shape and I feel like I've only scratched the surface, but overall it has just been a joy. It is fantastic. It is well worth the money. And I'm actually pretty damn glad that I bought the annual pass because if the same sort of quality in story writing is going to be followed the episodes following the greatest investment I could have made, you know, very, very good. So now I want to get into some of my gripes here primarily. And this is just a, this is exclusively a launch day thing. It was the servers. I missed a cutscene that was vital to the story. And I think a lot of other people did too. That definitely soured my tone a bit, having to look up a cutscene in the final expansion, the finale of the light and dark saga, having to look up one of the cutscenes on YouTube to keep up with the story. I was like, this is terrible. I can't believe it. Getting kicked out halfway through missions or right at the end of a mission, getting kicked out due to an error code, the three and a half hours to get into the game in general. It was, it was a very painful eight hours. I feel like I couldn't, I couldn't go through an entire mission without getting error coded at least once or twice. And then between missions, good luck getting to the next. By the end of the day, it seems like most of them were cleared up. Two days after the release, most of the issues I feel like have been cleared up. I haven't run into any more connection issues. I haven't run into any bugs or anything like that. The networking, the servers definitely soured the hype, but once it's all said and done, and when you get through it, you experience it all for yourself, man, it is fucking great. It is so good. And I cannot wait for the raid tomorrow, man. I I'm going to try and LFG it. I know that like people are like, Oh, what the fuck? You don't have a day one team. Don't have a team. And I'm like, no, I, I don't have I don't have more than two people that play the game that I know. And sometimes, honestly, some of the most fun I've had in Destiny is day one LFG. -ing. Anyways, guys, that's all from me right now. But overall, final shape, 10 out of 10, baby. And I'm so glad that I can say that. I was so worried it was going to be a flop. I was so worried that it wasn't going to be as good as it actually turned out to be. So let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the comments. Leave a like if you like. Subscribe if you wish. It's not mandatory, but it's always, always appreciated. Take care. Catch you guys on the flip side. Deuces.